aberration is a problem that you may never see, but it is a problem in certain files, particularly if you're shooting on a longer lens, in a higher contrast situation, or with a lens that might be more of a budgetary lens. These type of situations will create flares or issues with the edges where you might see a halo or a slight shift of magenta or green pixels along bright edges. But Aurora makes this easy to fix. If we take a look at this image here, there are some situations where we're likely to see some chromatic aberration, particularly because we have a very dark roof against a bright sky. And in the brighter exposures, what's going to happen is that's going to result in some chromatic aberration. Now, let's open one of these up for a moment. And if you look closely along the edges here, you see a little color shift. It's very subtle, but there's definitely a shift at the edge where the bright area and the dark areas intersect. So what we're going to do is take advantage of chromatic aberration removal. All right, let's quit Luminar. Let's switch back to Aurora and I'll choose File Open. I'll select my brackets and open them up. Now, in this case, I know I was on a tripod, so I'm not worried about alignment. But because of the high contrast situation of very dark areas intersecting with very bright areas, I'm going to choose the chromatic aberration reduction option as well as color denoise. This will really help ensure that we don't get any color fringe or unwanted colors that pop up along the bright edges. Typically, these will show up as purple or green. Now, I can click Create HDR. The scene is analyzed, and it takes a little bit longer because it has to remove the chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is not going to happen in all cameras or with all lenses. As such, make sure you don't turn it on if it's not needed because it does increase the processing time. Now, in this case, it's quite interesting. I like the image here and everything looks good, except notice how the clouds look a little weird. That's because I didn't turn on ghost reduction. So let's close this for a moment and re-merge the file. This time, we will select the option for ghost reduction and chromatic aberration removal. And we'll choose a higher setting because the clouds were really blowing quickly. We'll click Create HDR. There we go. Looks a lot better in the sky. Using the HDR basic controls, we could adjust Smart Tone and Contrast. Looks good. And I want to further recover the highlights slightly in the sky and put a little bit of Color Vibrance in with Color Contrast and Vibrance. Let's take advantage of the Adjustable Gradient and we'll pull down the top of the sky a little bit. Put a little bit of color in there. And we get some nice ramping. At the bottom, I'm going to adjust the exposure just a little brighter. All right, that looks good. I like the image. Now, I do see an unwanted subject and a little dust spot. Now, what I can do here is pretty cool. If you've got Luminar installed, you can choose Plugins, Luminar, and run it as a plugin right inside of Aurora. Now it's going to hand that layer off to Luminar and open it up. Let's invoke the tools here for clone and stamp or erase. We'll start with erase. And this makes it really easy to deal with the dust. I was particularly careless on this day and the HDR process takes dust that you can't even see and really adds it up. So this makes it simple to remove some of those spots. Now, I see that I probably could do a little bit more ghost reduction, but it's not too bad. I kind of like the wind look. There we go. You can easily go through and deal with any problem zones like I see here. I chose one that was particularly bad so you can get a little practice. When you're done, click the Erase button, and it will erase those spots. If you see others, just paint over them, and then click Erase, and it updates. 
Now I'll choose done. And the image is updated. But let's get rid of this person here. So we'll zoom in. I'm going to choose from the tools menu, clone and stamp. Now I can sample and start to remove a distracting object. There we go. Zoom in to make this a little easier. And just brush out the object that you don't want in the shot. Now, this type of editing is beyond Aurora's tool set because it's really an advanced photographic edit. And as such, Luminar is the right tool for it. But it is going to be very seamless because Aurora HDR and Luminar can hand files off back and forth very quickly. Bigger brush, right bracket. And I can start to paint that out. There we go. Remove the distracting object and blend. Left bracket for a smaller brush and paint. And with just a little bit of work, I've completely removed the intruding person that was in the scene. And you see they're now gone. Now, there are a few other intruders. There's one up here walking. So let's zoom in more. I'll option click there. Let's line the crosshairs up. There we go. And we can remove them. They're pretty small in the scene. And we take out the person walking with a backpack. And looking over the image, that seems to be the two most distracting elements in the scene. Oh, here's another small group. Of course, you can't take a bunch of photographers on a photography workshop without them eventually getting in each other's shots. There we go. So now I just have my landscape and not my unwanted bonus photographers included. So I'll click done and then apply. The image is updated and returned to Aurora as a new layer. So you'll see that it's right above on its own layer, making it very easy to work. I like that. Let's just apply a creative lookup table. I'm going to try a little bit of, I like this cool lookup table, changes the color temperature and just back that off a little bit. There we go. Let's put a little bit of radiance in there for a gentle glow. I like that. Use the polarizing filter to emphasize the sky. And I'm satisfied. If we look at the original and the new image, it's substantially different. And by using Aurora and Luminar together, I was able to get the type of image that I wanted.